Now, when I was first asked to do a comparison between the Galaxy Book 3 Pro 360 and the Asus Republic of Gamer Flow X16, I thought it was kind of weird because from a performance standpoint, the X16 literally kicks the crap out of the Book 3 in regards to graphical and intense workloads. However, when you think about these two laptops from basically a 4K video editing and maybe like Photoshop for graphic design, digital art, photography, these two laptops are very similar in their offering. So just right off the bat, if you're somebody who's gonna be doing 3D modeling, 6K video editing, you should choose the X16 because the Book 3 just won't have the performance for you. However, if you're a digital artist, graphic designer, photographer, or 4K video editor, then this comparison makes a ton of sense. Now, I'm not gonna go through benchmarks. I'm just gonna go through the general ins and outs of the laptops, talk about color gamut range, webcam, keyboard, and all of that in this specific video. Now, let's go ahead and check out the weight and thickness starting off because that's one of the big differences between these two laptops. The Book 3 is about one fourth to a half inch thinner than the X16, and it is substantially lighter. So if you want a thin and light on the go friendly laptop, then the Book 3 will definitely be your choice. If you're catching this video the week of its release, March 20th through the 26th, then Samsung is running their big spring discovery sale. Samsung S23, S22, TVs are on sale, and the Galaxy Books are on sale. So definitely gonna wanna head down in the description below and click those links. Now, if you're not catching this video during the Samsung discovery sale, I would still head on over there because a lot of times they have the Galaxy books on sale. So you definitely want to check the pricing compared to other websites. You might be able to get a better deal at samsung.com. Again, links in the description below. If you do make a purchase, I'll get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. Now, as we look at the ports and connectivity on the laptop, they're actually quite similar there as well. As you can see, we have two USB type C's on the left side panel, an HDMI port, and then you have the headphone jack on the X16. Now you can also hook in the XG Mobile from Asus here. I don't really think it's necessary because the specific model I have is the RTX 3070 Ti, and that's plenty of performance for the on-the-go creator in my opinion. Now, as we flip the laptops over for the ports and connectivity, we get a few more ports from the X16, but not many, honestly. We have a USB type A and a micro SD card reader. We see that on the X16 as well, except we have an additional USB type A. So from a port standpoint, these laptops are more similar than I initially expected. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the build quality. I love the assembly on the Book 3. It's so nicely put together. The bottom cover fits into the side panels very well. It's a great, well-built laptop. And of course you have one main vent here along the bottom. Now looking at the X16, a great laptop as well, very well assembled. There's gonna be some catchy edges just because of the uniqueness of the assembly. There's a lot of lines and curves and changes in the body as you're along the bottom cover where the Book 3 is very smooth, but still very well assembled, a magnesium alloy chassis versus an aluminum chassis. The weight is actually a little closer than I expected as well, and that's due to this being an aluminum chassis, a little heavier, and this being a thicker yet magnesium alloy chassis, which is a lighter material. Now let's do for fun a little tap test here. The Book 3 is very nicely assembled both on the bottom and top cover. And then we got the X16, even quieter, more of a dampened tap on the X16. And of course, as always, I do this just to assess the build quality. I hate when a laptop feels cheap, thin, and rattly in my hands, and neither of these laptops feel that way. Let's do a quick open and close test, see which one opens and closes smoothly. I need to take the feet off the bottom of this one, but this one opens and closes smoothly has a really nice firm hinge. And then of course the X16 has a really nice open and close as well. Now they're both two in one laptops. So you can go full rotation on the X16 and on the Book 3. And they're both 16 by 10 aspect ratio screen. So the actual like height of them is almost identical. So very similar in that regard. Now this one has the brightness turned down, so don't be deceived. Now, speaking of the screens, the X16 is actually a brighter screen by almost 200 nits. It's a mini LED display versus the AM OLED display on 
the Book 3. Now you have 568 nits of brightness on the X16, 100% sRGB, 95% Adobe RGB, and 99% DCI-P3, all at a Delta E of 1.34. However, the Delta E on the Book 3 is better. We have 412 nits of screen brightness at a 100% sRGB, 97% Adobe RGB, and 99% DCI-P3, all at a Delta E of 0.63. So if you're looking for a slight edge in color accuracy for color grading or for photo editing, then the Book 3 will be the better choice for you. Now, in regards to battery life, you're gonna have an advantage with the Book 3 by about two hours and even four hours in some workflows. So you can see the battery life results coming up on the screen right now, and the Book 3 is just a lower TDP, lower power consumption laptop that is built to be an on-the-go friendlier laptop than the X16. The X16 is one of the best on-the-go friendly high-performance laptops that is on the market right now with that 10 hours of streaming video playback and productivity battery life. However, you're comparing apples to oranges here, right? This is made to be efficient, made to be on the go friendly. This is more of a high performance gaming laptop and the battery life shows quite a lot that that is the case. So the flexibility of the X16 is its main advantage because you can do more with it. It has the GPU, it has the higher performing CPU. Um, and so you do have some advantages there. But in regards to battery life, you're definitely gonna be a winner on the Book 3. This is a really, honestly, a really good comparison. I'm really digging it so far. Now let's go ahead and look at the interior of the laptop. You can see here that the larger trackpad is gonna be on the Book 3, but the trackpad on the X16 is no small trackpad. It is a very nice size glass trackpad, very well designed from Asus. This is some of the best of what we see coming out of Asus. To me, this is really their premier laptop for 2022. It was just an incredible design. They took all of the best of what they learned from all the different laptops throughout the last couple of years, and they really slammed it into this laptop. So we have upward facing speakers, we have a large glass trackpad, we have a simplified keyboard, nice 16 by 10 aspect ratio display, and the Ryzen 9 6900HS processor which is one of their most efficient processors that they've used inside of their laptops. Now let's do a quick audio sample of the speaker since I mentioned the upward facing speakers to see what those two sound like. And in regards to the webcams, so here's a quick sample of the webcams in use. This is the webcam for the Asus Republic of Gamer X16 and a little sample of the audio for you as well. And this is the webcam on the Samsung Galaxy Book 3 Pro 360 and a little sample of the audio for you as well. Now the keyboards definitely offer a little bit of difference here. What we see is a numpad on the right side of the Book 3, no numpad option on the X16. I know people are either like do or die as far as numpads are concerned. I could care less about numpads personally. I don't have any use for them, but I know there's a lot of numpad fans out there that might be a make or break for you. But it has more of a medium key press on the X16, a shorter key press on the Book 3. Both really nice, both feel great under my fingers. I like the full size shift keys that both offer. And of course the large trackpads, they both sound so nice. Everything. Everything's just really good. I can see why this would be a hard decision for a lot of people. Uh, here's a quick audio sample of me using both the keyboards and trackpads so you can hear what those sound like. Now the pricing is something that's actually quite similar when these are both at a retail value. So the RTX 3060 version of the X16 is around $2,000 and the Book 3 is around $1,700 to $1,800 retail. Now, at the recording of this video, the Book 3 is actually on sale for I think $1,399 and 
The RTX 3060 version is on sale for, I think, like $1749. But then if you want the RTX 3070 Ti version, it's about $2,600, $2,500, give or take. So I'll put links in the description below so you can check the live pricing. And of course, if you do make a purchase, I'll get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. But of course, that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. Now, I will show you two benchmarks just so you can get kind of a glimpse of the performance of these two laptops. We're going to take a look at Photoshop. And as you can see in Photoshop, the better performer is going to be the X16. However, you don't need that much performance in Photoshop for it to run smoothly. Honestly, 700 points is a great benchmark where you'll get great performance in Photoshop and both laptops are well above that. Now for 4K video editing, both have great export times and both have smooth playback. However, because of the GPU, as you add more motion graphics, more clips, more details into your timeline, that dedicated GPU will really help you with a smooth playback. Whereas without the dedicated GPU, you might start to see yourself bogged down. I run the playback test with graphics, with music, but as you complicate your project and your own workflow, it might bog it down more. So if you want to kind of be safe and future-proof yourself, then having a dedicated GPU is very helpful. Now, as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, if you're going to be doing 3D modeling or Blender, or any sort of 6K video editing, I would recommend the X16. It just has the horsepower that you need in order to get the job done. The Book 3 is a fantastic on-the-go creator laptop, like I said, for 4K video editors, graphic designers, photographers, and digital artists, um, and just really great for a workflow. The X16, on the other hand, is great for so many use cases and if you're a gamer, it's great for that as well. This is not really promoted as a gaming device. It's a device that can game, but honestly, you're gonna want a dedicated GPU if you're doing those big AAA titles with all the crazy frames per second and high quality resolution. But this isn't a gaming channel, so I don't pretend like I know what I'm talking about. To me, this was a bit of an odd review, so I hope it's been helpful for you. Remember, links in the description if you wanna check the live pricing or make a purchase. And don't forget to subscribe, because as always, we're still trying to reach 100,000 subscribers and we're gonna give away three Legion 5 Pros when we do. I'll see you in the next video.